Um, thank you so much, um, Muhammad Sheikh. I think, again, we just went through a lot of different ayahs, and I think any time we're reminded of the Quran, we just realize there's just so much knowledge and breadth of guidance that we can have. And every time it's recited, it's like, you know, you just kind of feel like there's a different meaning or a more enhanced meaning every time. So where we're at right now is the best part. Um, the audience gets to ask questions. They get to, you know, really take this learning um, a, a little bit deeper. You have two internationally world-renowned scholars sitting in front of you um, and an open floor to ask questions. So just as a reminder, um, we really have this space as a place to have critical discord, to have critical thinking, to be able to, um, you know, take into account um, varying views from varying people. So we want to make sure that we're respectful of both scholars um, and the people around us. And so, you know, once you ask your question, I'll have the mic. If you have a question, um, just raise your hand. I'll bring it around to you. You ask your question, and then we can um, listen from each scholar on what they have to say. Um, if you don't want to speak on the mic, you can write down your question, and um, either me or uh, Rubina will come and just grab it from you and we can read your question for you as well. So if you don't want to speak on the mic, just write it down and hold it up and we'll, we'll get it. So I'm going to open the floor to whoever wants to be the first question. Oh, we already got one. Okay. Let me. Oh, you got it. I'm going to bring the mic too. Okay, you got the mic. You have a question. I'm a little confused. And you mentioned that. Uh, Bani Israel aren't the Jews, then who are they? Unless I misunderstood something. So that's my question. J just to repeat that, the question is, um, who is Bani Israel if they're not the Jews? And we'll have um, Muhammad Sheikh to answer on that, and then Imam Zaid Shaka would also um, request that you answer the question afterwards as well. You see, we decide in the Surah Fatiha, and we say, uh, we said, guide us on the state path, state path, and the way of those whom you blessed. I'm not going for the him. So when I was reading the book, so I listen, I was looking for the and un who are the blessed people. So we know for sure the prophets are the blessed. But as a community, who are the blessed? So see, Surah Baqarah 2, Ayah 40. Ya Bani Israel Askuru, Ni'amati Allati An'amtu Alaykum, Wa Ufu Bi'adi, Ufi Bi'adi, Wa Yaya Farabun. So these are the group of people that Allah blessed. He's saying it. So he's reminding the blessing that he has done, and he's asking to fulfill the covenant that I've done to, to you. So then further we read, uh, you, you order people the goodness and you forget yourselves and you read the book. Do you not understand? Then one verse is, And believe what has been revealed to you. Do not be of the first of the rejectors. When believe, now the ayahs are revealed to you. Believe what has been revealed over you, the Bani Israel, and do not be of the first of the rejectors, because they are the beholders of the book. There is another ayah. This. The Bani Israel are the inheritors of the book. Bani Israel got the hukum and nabuwat and prophethood. The Bani Israel, the children of Israel. So they are not Jews. They are the chosen people in all times as not these Jews, I'm telling you. They don't have anything. I'm talking about the Bani Israel who have got the book, who have got the hukum, who have got the nabuwat. And the, our the gentleman read the Quran. والحكم والنبوة. They are those to whom we gave Al Kitab, the book, Al Hukum, the governance, and Al Nubuwa, the prophecy. With 18 prophets, he read. They are all from children of Israel. 
There is not a single prophet out of the Bani Israel in the Quran. They are all in the book, Bani Israel, and they are the chosen people, chosen for uh, sharing the message to the world. So what happened? The day we we say people of the book are the Jews and Christian, the Bani Israel, the Jews and Christian. What are we? We are all giving that privilege to them. So I'm saying, look, the Quran says doesn't say that. Uh, do you want me to recite more? Do you understand what I said? Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, most of our scholars understand Bani Israel to be the children of Yaqub, the descendants of Yaqub, just as Bani Adam are the descendants of Adam. And then the Alladin Hadu, those are those who went astray and then they returned back to the guidance that was given to the children of Israel. Bani Israel by the prophets alayhim salam and uh, al Yahud was a specific tribe one of these tribes from the Jews so they're all related to the Jews comprehensively Bani Israel just all of us are Bani Adam Jews, Christians, Muslims so Bani Israel uh, most of the scholars the overwhelming amount of the scholars from the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and all the generations say they are the descendants of Yaqub salam. And Bani Israel are the ones who went astray. Uh, uh, hadu are the ones who deviated and came back to guidance. And Al Yahud was a, a small group or a sub tribe from, that, from the children of Israel. So all of them have some connection with the descendants of Yaqub. Wallahu alam wa mustan. And Allah knows best. The origin of Bani Isai that sister was asking, the origin of Bani Isai, just forgot to mention, in, is in the uh, Ayah Surah 17 and, and three Ayahs. So just I'm just reminding that most people think about Yaqub, but in the Quran, there's the origin of where is the origin? The Quran speaks of Bani Adam and Bani Israel too, but that's all. So Bani Adam is all mankind, but Bani Israel are chosen people who board the ship of Noah. And I say that in Surah 17 and 2 ayat, Wa atayna Musa al kitab wa jalna huda li Bani Israel, Allah tati khidub in duni wa kila, dhuriyata Bani Israel, ending Bani Israel is the zuriyat. Man hamilna ma'anu that it, the Bani Israel, the offsprings whom we carried with the Noah's Ark. Inna ukan Abdan Shakura. So the origin of Bani Israel starts the believers with Noah Islam, not his wife, not his son, the believers who were uh, asked by Allah to 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 go onto that ship, as mentioned to us. So. That is from there, the offspring from Bani Israel, the offspring from the Noah's Ark. So all the, from the Noah's Ark, the believers came into the world where the boat went, and they are the children of Israel. Children of Adam is all mankind, they don't have book. Children of Israel are the Bani Israel who have got the book, Hukum and Nabuwat, and they are the Warisin, meaning the inheritors of the book as well, in the mention of the Quran. So origin is, the, in the Noah's Ark. On, on that first, on just on this point, uh, if if the uh, language in the Quran says, for example, "Zuriyatan min hamalna ma'nuh," so the descendants of those we carry from Nuh, that doesn't mean that the appellation itself starts there. So, for example, we 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 are described as. Millat Abi, Abi Na Ibrahim, who was a Muslimun. Muslim. He nay, the name Muslim was given to us by Ibrahim alayhi salam. But that doesn't mean the specific revelation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which specifies us as Muslims, started with Ibrahim. So Ibrahim called us Muslims. 
there is no Quran with Ibrahim. That was revealed to Muhammad much later. There was no uh, Shariati Muhammadiyya. The Sharia that was uh, derived from the Quran, from the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu those weren't with Ibrahim, but we still call Muslims. So the, the fact that uh, there's a mention of descent doesn't negate the specificity of a later appellation. So mentioning uh, those who were carried in the ark with Noah doesn't negate the specificity of those who are the descendants of Yaqub being referred to as Bani Israel. And if, if the issue were that clear, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be significant difference in terms of how the Sahaba understood the issue, how the Tabi'in understood the issue, and how the scholars have historically have understood the issue. Either they missed something, all of them, and then 2,000 years later, we stumbled upon the truth somehow. And so I, I would just suggest, I, I would like to see, sir, that opinion, uh, the Sahaba who held that opinion, the Tabi'in who held that opinion, and the ulama who held that opinion. And if, if uh, the majority of them, even a significant number, held that opinion, I would say, that's a valid opinion. But if not, I would say that it's, it's conjecture. Uh, otherwise, the, the only logical conclusion is they all missed it, and we got it right. And that, that to me, that's a, a dangerous contention. Wallahu alam. The question was asked that the, the prophets, he asked me a question, the prophets or the ashabas, they didn't get the message about the children of Israel. But every Ashaba read the Quran, and Quran is perfectly coming to us directly from them. Any other book cannot be constant like Quran. So it can never be that you take an, a, a, a concept based on, the, on, on, on some other book and say that the, all the Ashaba did not agree to it. But the question is, man hamalla ma nuh is mentioned in the Quran. So all the scholars were reading this. All the ulama deen or the ashaba were reading this and doing sujood on this. So this is what I'm trying to convey is we take the other book as the authority and this book as below down. <laughs> so I would request if, if you say that who the ashaba, I said the ashaba read this. They did, the people are attributing other books to him that they they follow this, so this is a, a re, you must believe that this book never changed. And whatever he's saying that the Sahaba did not agree like about the children of Israel, is not mentioned in the Quran. So one verse I read again, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَ الْهُدَى In Surah 40, it says, وَأَوْرَثْنَا بَنِي سَلَيْلَ الْكِتَابِ Meaning, we definitely gave Moses the guidance and awrathna and make them the inheritors, Bani Sahil, Bani Wala says the inheritors of the book. Today this book is are the inheritors of are the Bani Sahil. I am referring in the ayat. The origin also I mentioned, it is from the Noah's Ark. So they are the Bani Sahil. They originated from the Zuriyat Yaman Hamad Manu. And then today they are Walaqad Ataina Musa al Huda wa awrathna Bani Sahil Kitab. That we gave Moses the book. A guidance, and we made Bani Sahil the waris, the, 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 the inheritors of the book. So how would you justify this? I'm simply asking, sir, bring me tafsir from this hahab of this verse that say the Bani Israel are the descendants of Nuh. The ayah is saying it. The ayah is amenable to interpretation. Which ayah are we talking about? 14. No, which one? What is sorry, the Zuriyat Aban Hamalamu? Zuriyat Aban Hamalamu. Okay, 17.2. Right, so I'm, I'm simply asking one simple question. Okay, 17.3. You're saying that the ayah is saying, of course the ayah is saying it, but the ayah isn't saying that the Bani Israel are those 
It's saying they're the descendants of those we carry with, Moses, uh, with Noah. Yeah. The descendants of those carried with Noah, that appellation begins with one of his descendants named Yaqub. So I'm just asking you to bring, I'm, I'm, I'm asking with an open mind and open heart, bring me tafsir of this verse from any of the Sahaba, any of the Tabi'in, any of the A'imma that say that the, this is stating that the Bani Israel begins with Nu. No, sorry. I read in verse, it says, Wa ataina Musa al Kitab, we gave Moses the book. No. What a minute. Wa ja'alna hudali Bani Israel. This book was given to, to Moses. To Moses. And it is a guidance to the children, children of Israel. For the children of Israel, who are the descendants of Yaqub. No, hold on. Children of Israel. I didn't say descendants of Yaqub. I didn't say. I it? said it. No, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, the children of Israel, okay? Yes. And then, Allah ta'ala, uh, Allah min duni wakila. The further I say, what is Bani Israel? They are the descendants. man These are the offsprings whom we carried with Noah. With Noah. This is the ayah says. So what I'm saying is, you are saying only descendant is Yaqub. No, no, I'm saying that you Moses, we yeah. gave Moses the scripture to guide the Bani Israel. Total agreement. I agree with you 100%. I, I agree with the literal meaning of the verse, the scripture. What, what do you understand the literal meaning of the verse? What do you understand? I'm saying I agree that Moses was given the Torah to guide the Bani Israel. No or, book, no Torah. Moses was given the scripture okay. to guide Bani Israel. Yes, please. Agree, total agreement. Where I disagree is that Bani Israel are the the Bani Israel are the direct descendants of Noah. No, no to who we, uh, the, who, the, all those people who were in the ark, they are the descendants of people who were in the ark. They were the believers. Oh, we're all descendants of of the people in the ark. So you're no, you're no not all. But then the Adam is separate because the, no, no, no. The, 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 the punishment came not to the whole world. The Quran doesn't okay. say that. Well, Only to those people who were rejecting. Okay. So, those so what you're saying is the flood did not cover not the, the whole, whole world. No, only to those people. And, that, and therefore there were people, descendants of the human family who weren't on the ark. The from the parts said, of the world that didn't. Bani Adam. So, yes. so the differentiating factor no, here no. is the yeah. Bani Israel. I, I think, I think that's that's a subject that I would say is okay. a minimal okay. to a, a lot of scriptural and historical research yeah. to be accepted as a fact. As a night, I can show you that the, the Azad came only to those people who are with Noah's people. They laugh it off and not the whole world. So, the, the, in the Bible, is the whole world. In the Quran, is the only those people who reject it. So believers was in the boat, and and the rest of the people are the mankind. Look today also the azab comes in the parts of the world where where Allah thinks that they are the, to be punished, not the whole world. But when he comes to the whole world, it gives the punishment to the whole. Generally, I'm speaking. I, I, yeah, I, I think that I think that's that's a very okay. Let's leave it. No yeah, problem. yeah. No problem. Contentious way of looking at okay. history and scripture. Allah alam. But I, I just ask open-mindedly, just I would like to see that tafsir from, from the Sahaba and the early generations. Their, their opinions and their views of Qur'an are available. And if they're not available, I would like to see uh, the reasons that the well-known opinion, I'm saying opinion, that the Bani Israel are the, the descendants of Yaqub. What are the reasons if we don't have tafsir from the companions or tabi'in that supports your interpretation? Why should we reject the opinion that we do have from many of the Sahaba, the tabi'in, that the descendants of uh, Yaqub are the Bani Israel? Why? Why should we reject that? Based on, based on 
what our forebears have said. It is based on Bible, basically. Uh, well, I, I, I don't base religion on Bible. It's, I don't base Islam on Bible. No, no, I can read to you. I can refer exactly what it happened. Uh, Old Testament, Genesis 32. When man saw that he was not winning the struggle, he stuck, struck the Jacob on the hip and it was thrown out of the joint. The man said, let me go. Daylight is coming. I won't unless you bless me. Jacob answered, until you bless me, I won't let you go. He's holding fast. So he said, that man said, who's caught, he said, what is your name? The man said, Jacob. He answered, the man said, your name will be no longer Jacob. You have struggled with God. You have struggled with men. You have won. So your name will be Israel. Israel word comes in the Bible here. And from the offsprings here are the children of Israel. That's biblical totally. It's what I read from the Quran is different. So, so this is what I'm trying to say. It is the, the, all these scholars have written wherever the children of Israel come, they say Ala Yaqub, follower of the Yaqub. Yaqub, Yaqub is mentioned. You also mentioned Yaqub, Jacob. So I'm saying this is a biblical concept, not the Quranic concept. Actually, the question that I have says, can you give a reference from the Bible that Jews are the descendants of Yaqub to be called Bani Israel? So that might be a good segue. Oh, you did just answer. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we'll go, um, you and then you, and I'll, I'll read this in the meantime as we get the mic rolled on. So this says, um, it's addressed to you, um, Brother Muhammad Sheikh. Um, in your lecture, you said Jesus, son of Maryam, was born prophet, and Ahmad, peace be upon him, was not prophet by birth, but Jesus, peace be upon him, said, after me, one messenger of God will come. His name is Ahmed. Please explain Ahmed was not a prophet of God before coming in the world. Please explain the difference between messenger of, of God and prophet of God. Uh, the question referred to that Jesus was a prophet, born prophet. He never <laughs> referred to a born prophet. He said, I'm a messenger. What he said, I'm a messenger. Oh, children, I, uh, uh, ya Bani Israel, inni Rasulullah ilaykum. He said, oh, children, I'm a messenger to you. Uh, a messenger to you. Musaddiqa lima bayna yadayya min al-Tawrat. And I'm confronting from the Tawrat. Wa mubashirum bi Rasul. He's saying, a messenger to me, and a message is coming after me. He did not say his birth and everything. He said, messenger is a, is a, anyone carrying message of anything, of God Almighty or people or anything. So he's saying, a messenger will come after me. He did not say, a prophet is coming after me. A messenger is coming after me whose name will be Ahmad. So what I'm trying to say, the one who questioned me, I'm saying Jesus did not refer as a prophet himself. He was born prophet, of course. But what he precise, what he prophesied was a messenger coming after me. So messengers are who deliver the message. The angels are the messengers in the Quran. Rul Amin Jibir is a messenger in the Quran. And human beings are the messenger of the Quran. Prophets are always human beings. They get the title of prophethood. Messengers, Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. So they get the title of the prophethood and they follow the messenger. Atiullah wa Rasul. They, they follow Allah in the messenger. When you follow Allah in his messenger, maybe Allah gave him the prophethood. That Allah's uh, business. What I'm trying to convey, prophet is always a human being and it can, a person can attain that status by Allah. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the seed of the prophets. So he did not say a prophet, he said a messenger after me coming. Okay? Yeah. Where, the, he was a born prophet, right? Already he had okay. The answer is answer. We're just we're gonna yeah let's let's answer. yeah let the um let's keep questions and comments and fish but afterwards there'll be time to individually talk to his, his scholars as well. Did you want? Yeah, I think that uh, this response uh, messenger angels are called rusul. Uh, human beings are called rusul. And. The, the true recipient of a special status with Allah 
is those are the prophets and Nabi. I think that's a dangerous play on words. Uh, because in, in generally, just uh, before, I, I, I neglected a point. So this point that Isa Islam was born a messenger and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't or born a prophet and the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't Isa Alayhi Salam is articulating they're, they're both prophets and messengers with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with his, uh, his knowledge but his qudra, his, de his decree hasn't ordained that that's manifested in chronological time. So Isa alayhi salam is merely expressing what's with Allah. But that doesn't mean that it has manifested chronologically. So I'll give you an example. Umar radiallahu an was beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was one of the greatest enemies of Allah. So the Prophet sallallahu he prayed Allahumma azzal islam bi ahabba al-rajulain wa ahabba al-umarain ilayk Oh Allah, strengthen Islam with which of these two men are most beloved to you? And some virgin Amrain, uh, Amr bin Hisham, Abu Jahl, Umar bin al-Khattab, Umar bin al-Khattab So that means when he made that dua and Umar was an enemy of Allah he was beloved with Allah. But that love and his status as al Faruq hadn't manifested itself chronologically uh, with us in our world. And the saying, Isa alayhi salam, referring to himself as a prophet as opposed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is a reference to what is existing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his knowledge and his decree his ordainment that hasn't manifested it itself chronologically. When, when the, uh, Allah mentioned in the Quran, فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولُ الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ Patiently endure as those great messengers patiently endure. And so who are those great messengers? They're not, uh, it's not a reference to the angels who are rusul. It's not a messenger to us who can be referred to as Rasul. It's an arsaltuka ila fulan bi risala. That doesn't mean that I sent you to so and so with a message. So these, this language has a general application and a specific application. I think what's happening here is the general is being mixed with the specific to support certain foregone conclusions. Which, which reinforce the theory that's being advanced. And again, that's a very dangerous way, way to approach the religion. I've, and my simple question is, we should have someone who has uh, mentioned this previously. Otherwise, it, it becomes a, a case of al isnad min ad Authenticated chains of narration are an integral part of the religion. And if it weren't for these authenticated chains of narration, anyone could have said anything and attributed it to Islam. So I'm just saying, what is the isnad for, for these opinions? Who uh, in, in previously has done the, these plays on language? Or is it something, again, that's unprecedented? And if it's something unprecedented, and it's something that has no authenticated chains of narration to uh, bona fide scholars, to the Sahaba, the companions who have carried the religion to us, then what prevents someone else from doing the exact same thing, as has happened? So what prevents us from giving uh, legitimacy to Rashad Khalifa's number 19 theory, which was totally uh, rejected and dismantled by Dr. Bilal Phillips. But what gives us uh, from, from a, a principle foundation from, 
uh, the ability to reject that totally novel theory. So that's all I'm saying. If, if these are valid interpretations and positions in the religion, then they should have a precedent. If they're unprecedented, then, and they go against scholarly opinion on many of these issues, then we're in very dangerous territory. That's all I'm saying. S thank you. So next question. Thank you. Um, Aslam alaikum. Uh, I have a question for brother, for brother Muhammad Sheikh. Um, if there is the only book uh, or teaching of all prophets, then my question is, if the present day Bible is not the teaching of Jesus, then what is the status of that, the book Bible? Okay. So again, um, the questions are to both scholars, and we decided before that we were going to alternate who starts first. So Imam Jai Shakr, I'm going to let you answer that first. I On your mic. I, I think the person who brought up the specific subject should answer first. OK, so we're not going to do that. OK, go ahead. Yeah, I understand. You see, uh, uh, you know, there's one verse in Surah Baqarah 279 verse. And it describes in that ayah about the status. <laughs> so they woe to those who write the book with their own hands and they say this is from Allah. So now Allah is describing that our people in the world who are writing a book in the name of Allah, in the name of God. So they say that that these people, the Bible writers are said, it's an inspired book. The Gospels are inspired by this. So if you compare, you know, if you really compare the, the book of Allah that I, wrote, I read from here, and if you read the Bible, or even, even if you read the Hadith, you can understand, clearly make the difference that this is not from Allah, because if I write a book or if you write a book, they can never be the same, though they are writing the same story. So I mean there's a huge difference between us because it says Allah says, Wain guntum fi abdina fatu bi surat in ministry. If you are in doubt or what, what we have revealed, come with a surah. So if the whole Bible is have contained the words of there are good writings, I do not deny that. Similar writings, but they can never be attributed with God. No hadith should be attributed with God. Only Quran, the book of Allah, is to be attributed to God. That's my belief. And those who are writing the book with, with their own hands, and they say this is from Allah. The Bible is has got many uh, contradictions and many Bibles are there. I don't want to go into detail. I'm not a good student of Bible. Uh, well, what was the original question? <laughs> the book of Jesus. Uh, Jesus. What about Jesus? Oh, and I forgot the the original was saying that the Bible is not the yeah. Can you repeat? Oh, that's I'm in agreement with Dr. Sheikh. I think the the Ummah is in, in that what we read today of the Bible, Old or New Testament, is not the revelation that was given to to Musa in the case of the Old Testament or even the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament and what we read of the Gospel, even if we contain it to the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and don't take into uh, account the, the other books of the New Testament, I think yeah. we're, we're in agreement. The Ummah of Muhammad is in agreement that uh, much of that, the original revelation was lost. What is related has been tampered with or altered has been uh, interspersed with opinions. And so th I think th we're all in agreement that what we read today as the Bible is not what re was revealed to either Musa alayhi salam or to uh, Isa alayhi salam or any other uh, prophets or messengers who might be mentioned therein. And the Quran therefore is, is the criterion for distinguishing what remains of truth and what has been uh, altered. So the Quran is the Furqan, the criterion for distinguishing the truth and those earlier scriptures. 
Okay. Um, if you have other questions, um, we'll go around and get. Uh, let's try to get everyone to be able to ask questions first, and then if you guys have double questions, triple, hopefully we can get to you as well. So, right there. Oh, you have it. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Waalaikum assalam. Did uh, did uh, Moses and uh, Muhammad and Isa get the same Sharia? No, they got Tawheed. They got monophism. We mentioned We gave to, uh, we've uh, sent to every nation a messenger instructing them to worship Allah and obey the false God. But the details of actual worship vary from one prophet to the next until we had the final uh, dispensation of of uh, prophetic guidance with our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And again, a lot of the extreme difficulty that was found uh, amongst the Jews and their law was relieved and allevi alleviated and mitigated by the Prophet, by uh, the Sharia shuri of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you define Sharia for those who don't know? Sharia is the general uh, general prophetic guidance in the case of Muhammad Sallallahu the general guidance that was uh, based on the revelation and based on yeah. what was given to the Prophet Sallallahu to guide us. The specifics of that are found in the in the fiqh. So the general guidance that was given the way of the Prophet Sallallahu in, in general mm -hmm. is Sharia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the details vary from Prophet to Prophet. So a lot of the dietary restrictions that the Jews have are very difficult. Don't mix this particular uh, food with this one. Don't mix that one with that one. That's good. Those are generally uh, uh, abrogated by the law of Muhammad so that was given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So bottom line, uh, yes, they do differ from Prophet to Prophet, but Tawheed is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Surah Shura 42, verse 13, Shara lakum min ad ma wassa bi nuham wal ladhi awhayna ilayka wa ma wassayna bihi Ibrahim wa Musa wa Isa Sharia or Shara rule for you from the judgment is what we gave testament with it to Noah al Islam and we inspired to you, so called Muhammad, and the Shara Lord, what was testament we gave to, Isa, to Ibrahim al Islam, Abraham, and to Moses and to Isa and Jesus and to establish the judgment. If you do not difference in it, it appears big over those who associate to what you invite them towards it. Allah chooses to towards it whom he wills and he guides. So in this verse, the Sharia is given to the same to Noah, to Ibrahim, to Moses, to Jesus and to Muhammad. Next question in the back and then Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you both, both of the imam. Uh, thank you so much. And this is one of a kind debate I'm attending in my 30 years here. Um, I have been listening to Imam Zaid Chaki for the last 20 some years. So my question is only to Sheikh Muhammad. You can rest. So uh, I'm a just, just like a common person like me. Uh, this discussion is a little bit too complicated. So I read the Quran too, like, you know, born Muslim, born and raised Muslim. So uh, Sheikh Muhammad, the only thing is that, okay, uh, I this, I that, the message you give, how will I implement in my regular life? So what is the real message? Okay, uh, like beside the argument. So like for me, like, you know, according to you, how can I live my regular life? So what is, how can we implement in our life? So just to briefly, like, what is the message? Thank you for asking this question. Uh, First of all, the message is to believe in God Almighty. 
And once you believe in God Almighty, the La ilaha means there is no one to accept. I believe that when I say La ilaha, even the Sahabas, whoever you say, I say La ilaha. I don't believe it. Illa Allah, only you believe when you, you believe Allah and His ayats. That should be the Furqan, the criterion. So if you give me a big name, it doesn't affect me. I believe La ilaha. So the first message that you have to say La ilaha means there is no one to be accepted except Allah. And then Muhammad Rasulullah is the medium to, to give the message. The medium, Muhammad Rasulullah is the medium in the, in the Quran. He's giving the message. They say, Yas aluna kanil mahis. They ask you about menstruation. So the message is there. What to do in the menstruation? Detached with the woman. So if you are a woman, then married life. So I deliver a talk, husband-wife relationship, parent-children relationship, the message there. I'm giving different topics from the Quran to take guidance. So one of the messages, it's not only, first you have to believe in God Almighty, I told you, then Muhammad Rasulullah, and then you know your enemy is Shaitan, Iblis. These are the three, three personalities you must know, because we think that Shaitan may be a good curse guy, because of all this turban and everything. But basically, you, I've delivered a talk on the shaitan, I've given a talk on God Almighty, I've talked on Muhammad Rasulullah and the other prophets. But now coming to human lifetime, what we have to do, you know these enemy, who's the enemy? Now you take guidance, it's your family life. Father, son relationship, I've given a talk on, on the ayahs, based on ayahs. Then husband-wife relationship, based on the ayahs. Then uh, if someone does faisha, again in the ayahs. So then, I, I, I think there are five, but I'm talking about a family, family life. Hijab. Now, there's a big dispute going on hijab. Now, if you read the Quran, in the hijab, the hijab is mentioned with Maryam and with God Almighty and with men. The hijab word occurred in the Quran with Allah, with Mary and with men. There is no word hijab with women. But what the Christians are doing hijab from the biblical point of view, all the Muslims are doing it, label Muslims. The amazing thing is that we are, and I tell you, there are many things that Christians, Muslims does it, which the, there are uh, commandments in the Bible. Daswa, chaliswa, you know, ten, when somebody dies, you have to cut a black goat for, you know, sins. So I can tell you many things, it's in the Bible. So mostly Muslims do not know. They read the Quran in Arabic. What they are practicing is biblical. So if you know the book, if you want to know what basic thing, I'm telling you, family life is first. You and your family is first. So I've delivered talk. Then you have to know what book is. So I've de delivered uh, a talk. Know yourself. No book of Allah is the book, Quran, book of Allah. Uh, Torah, Gospel, Psalms, Hadith, Sunnah, Wisdom, God, Holy Ghost, the language, the guy is, is the attributes of the I'm giving different, different talks on these things. Then there is uh, know yourself. Are you a Muslim in the nearness of Allah? Allah defines who is a Muslim in the nearness of Allah in the Quran. Who are the people of the book? Who are children of Israel? Who are the protectors, the Aliyah, the protectors? Who are the Khalifa? Who are the Imam? How we become sex? Jews and Christians. These are different topics. You identify by the subject matter because Quran talks different subjects mixed together. So you have to first, uh, I have done what is separated them and then I have read it. So I came to know about the Jews, the Quranic Jews, not the, these label Jews, the Christian Jews, the Christianity, Nasara, they meant Nasara. Nasara means helpers. They don't mean who believe in Christ and with the Father, Son and Ghost. But we have labeled them as Christians. So, so what I'm trying to say, the basic thing is all the topics I, if I read, if you read this, I can, you can take this with you. And you see there are many topics discussed, at least 60 topics on different subjects. But all these subjects are based on Quranic ayat and a booklet is given to you. You read the lectures and then you will note those verses and you'll get the spirit. Otherwise, people are reading the Quran, reading the Quran, they are all mixed up and you don't get it. I mean, mostly the people cannot, because Quran keep on changing the subject continuously. 
Adam Alaihissalam uh, mentioned, then Moses comes, then marriage comes, <laughs> and and then something you know. So I have made separate subjects. You can watch them, and inshallah, you can get them. Okay, thank you. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do sisters and brothers, and then Imam. Yeah. Sure. The uh, Quran explains itself. So the, the first source of explanation, principle of tafsir, Al-Qur'an bil Quran. We see what else is in the Quran on a specific subject. And then we go from Quran being explained by the Sunnah. And then Quran being explained by what the companions and tabi'in have handed down to us. And the Quran being explained by its clear linguistic meanings. So the issue of hijab, hijab is one subject. Uh, but hijab is explained by another verse, which is the verse of the khimar. So Allah says in the Quran, وَلِيَضْرِبْنَا بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ so the, the khimar is what the uh, sister here has on. The Arabs used to wear a head covering the women with the telling behind their backs. The Quran, not the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says, ala So let the women take what the cloth hanging behind them and use it to cover their breast. That's literally what the Quran says. And so to uh, deny, possibly that's not what uh, Dr. Sheikh is doing. <laughs> no, I didn't the, deny this first. Yeah, yeah. I didn't the, no, I believe this one, then uh, Jalabi but, didn't also um, believe. But I think what yeah, your yeah, answer yeah. could be interpreted or misinterpreted to no, imply. No, no, I believe this and I, I believe that they should okay. cover this. I believe this Jalabi Bihin also. Yeah. Eh? Okay. But my only... Uh, no. I believe there's those two. I said the word hijab is not mentioned. That was I was saying. Yeah. Well, see, and this, this is where I think concepts are more important than labels. There, there was an incident where in the early years of Islam, when Islam was spreading, there was a Christian tribe called Bani Taghlib. And Bani Taghlib were a Christian tribe, and when they were asked to pay the jizya, they said, no, we want to pay zakat, like the Muslims. We considered belittling for us to have a special name. So Omar said, you know, call it whatever you want, just pay it. So he said, it's, it's folly to get hung up on words when the concept is the same. And so I think if, if we are constantly wrangling over specific words on the one hand, we can miss the whole concept. And if on the other hand, uh, we're, we're uh, taking ideas in isolation and not integrating them into the fuller Quranic context, then we can, we can arrive at some very erroneous conclusions. So it, everything has to be integrated together. Okay, um, we'll take a question from the brothers. I think um, there's a mic back there. Yeah, and then um, we're gonna get the scholars to limit to two to three minutes. We can get some more questions. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to say thank you to both speakers. Um, Imam Zaid, your speech resonated with me as an American. Uh, as far as the problems we face and how we can use the Islamic concepts to solve the problems. While Brother Muhammad Sheikh, you talk more about fundamental stuff, but it's, it's very different from what's accepted, you know? So my question to both of you is what is your suggestion to not cause a division so we can continue to focus on the practical issues? I, 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 can I answer first? Yes, yes. Please, yes. And then I have to leave. My, my day started this morning at about 4 in the morning. And I had to fly here from Houston, Texas. I need, and I have to teach a class at 9 p.m. on Zoom. So I have to rest up 
before that class. So I'm, I'm going to say this in conclusion to my, my brother's question. I think what, what we have to do is to avoid confusion, to avoid falling into a lot of the uh, uh, things that have caused uh, a severe loss of religiosity, for example, amongst the Jews with Reformed Judaism. We, we have, as Muslims, uh, we, we, we have a methodology, and we have a tradition that's been handed down to us. Uh, I, the Quran, a lot of people, for example, will say, uh, I, reject, I reject hadith, for example. If someone says that uncritically, implicitly, they're rejecting the Quran. Why do I say that? Because there, there's a, a br branch of hadith called uh, hadith mutawatir. And that's hadith that have been handed up to us, not by individual chains of narration, hadith ahad, but groups upon groups at every single stage of transmission. It's called hadith mutawatir. The Quran has been handed down to us by tawatur. The same way hadith mutawatir. So if someone essentially says, I reject all hadith, and don't, doesn't distinguish between hadith mutawatir, then they're essentially saying, I reject the Quran. Because how did the Quran get to us? Us right here in 2022. It didn't drop from heaven. It was handed down to us the same way hadith mutawatir, by human beings, but in groups upon groups, at every level of its transmission, so it, it boggles the mind to imagine that everyone conspired to fabricate what they're live, narrating. And so I say that to say this, the, the foundation of our religion, including the Quran, including the fundamental teachings of the religion, have been handed down to us by Tawatur. If we accept that and build our, our, our affair on that, then there's no, there's no foundation for confusion, there's no foundation for division, and, and there's, no, there's no platform for someone in the 20th century to come up with novel interpretations that have not been handed down to us by Tawatu. And that doesn't say every novel thing might, uh, might be something dangerous or spurious, but when we get into uh, uncharted territory that we can't establish has been handed down to us by unbroken chains of groups upon groups, it becomes hard to distinguish what might be valid and what might be uh, not be valid. What interpretations are acceptable and unacceptable? What is uh, something to just dismiss lightly and something to go to, to war over? And that, that's a formula for disaster and where it will lead us, I think, is where it, will lead, uh, where it has led the Jews and many Christian denominations. And that's with a reformed religion that doesn't have a backbone that will be able to, to stand up against the challenges of time. And, and when, when the time challenges, the origin will be lost in the confusion. Well, I'll give this whole piece and taste you. I will excuse myself, I really appreciate it. Do you, would you, you mind? Me also. No, you can. Um, just one can. minute. You see, I just want to clarify it. What brother is saying is, if that is so common and straightforward, why there are many contradictions and, and contradictions that the different schools of thoughts originated from them? There's not one concept, what he's trying to say. There's no one, except the Quran is one concept. The other things are contradictory. Mm -hmm. if you go read I any. Didn't say that. No, you said it is mutawatir and. I said, I said the Quran and Hadith mutawatir. Both come to us by the same method. Okay, but the Quran I read in the ad, it was it was it was uh, Torah was memorized by the Book of God in the in the law of Mahfuz. It is not the same thing. 
You know, no yeah, hadith no, is memorized. No, the other judgment, the Quran is memorized. You can see there's a difference, hell of a big difference. The Quran is memorized by different nations of the world. I, I did deliver this talk. Hadith is not memorized, and they're contradictory hadiths. And then many contradict people, no one come to one conclusion. If I'm taken out as a separate band, but why the other people, their Shia school of thought, the other school of thought, four six books of Hadith of Shias and six books of Sidney and the Ibn Kashir and other guys are all contradict, just not one single concept coming down. They all contradict contradictions. No, not the fundamentals. They uh, are all, wh which one says we have six <coughs> prayers? Which one said we fast, our obligatory fast is Shaban and not Ramadan? No, if, if I'm, there, there are differences, but the essentials of the religion is miraculously preserved. And, and when you say Quran, all right, which, which reading of Quran came from the law Mahfuf? Mm -hmm. uh, meaning, was it uh, Ibn Kathir? Was it Hafs on Asim? Was it Warsh on Nafi? All of these uh, uh, readings of Quran have been handed down by Tawatur. They've been memorized. Hadith Mutawatur has been memorized. I'm, I've, I've met human beings who memorize the fundamental hadith corpus. Few people. So, yeah, Not but the, the point is, after they've been recorded in the books, they didn't have to be memorized. But Quran is still memorized. Uh, no, but that's, that's not the point. The point is, after the hadith were recorded, including hadith mutawatir, at that point, they didn't have to be memorized. The book has to be protected. And no one's saying that the version of Bukhari that we have now is different from what Imam Bukhari compiled. No one says that. Why, so, why do you believe it's the same? Th the, this is my point. You say all these different Shia and this and that, all, it's a miracle that all of those differences, we come out with five prayers. All of those differences, we come out with an obligatory fast in Ramadan. All of those differences, we come out with wine, pork, swine, etc., a haram. So what I'm saying, the foundation of our religion, despite these differences, has reached us, has come to us. And that the only thing that will erode that foundation are spurious, un un unpredic unprecedented opinions that have not reached us from our earlier generations. That's all I'm saying. And if, if we begin to give priority to those new uh, novel innovations as opposed to what has been come down to us as the foundations of our religion and the foundations of scriptural interpretation, we're going to end up just like the Jews. We're going to have a reformed religion that doesn't have the fiber, the spiritual strength behind it from generations of pious people pushing it forth through time. It's going to fizzle out and it's going to die and it's going to fade away. It's already faded in the world, no, man. No, What's the world? It, it, it you don't find faded. good believers in the world. Uh, well, Maximum you'll find you, all confusion. You don't find good believers in no, the no, world. I've met few people. I've met, sure one, I've met majority. I'm talking majority. I'm talking, I've met multitudes and multitudes. Afghanistan, and Muslim multitudes. country, Pakistan, Muslim country, all the Muslim country, you look at their behavior. They are reciting the Arabic Quran, well, know nothing of well, the Quran. Well, well Muslim, talking, Muslim countries have been dropped. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim countries haven't dropped a, Muslim, a nuclear bomb on any, no, anybody. No, no, Muslim it. countries still have an idea of family. So I understand. Muslim, Muslim countries, and it's the corruption and pollution of the West that's undermining and creating these greedy, materialistic Muslims. So what I'm saying is Muslim. What I'm saying is, Su'adhan bin Muslimin having a bad opinion of the Muslims leads to a, a, a blanket dismissal of everything, including their tradition, and opens the door for some novel, uh, spurious way of looking at the religion that's somehow going to save us. We're going to be saved by that which saved our ancestors. No, no, you, you can only be saved by your works. You don't have to be saved by how people behave. Stop anyway. war. Anyway. <laughs> so, Imam Zich, by America. Thank you.
Uh, 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 Okay. He has so much work to do. He's very much knowledge in math. There's a prayer place inside. Thank you. Somewhere. Can I take the mask off for a little bit? My wife. You can remain for five minutes, two minutes. Good for a guy. I want to see your face. Yeah. Yeah, you look nice. One second. This like a. Hey, I'll give you another one. Do you want? Can you stay with us in the picture? Stop talking. <laughs> Come with us in the picture. I have a thousand Muslims on my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Okay, let us know. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. 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 So no, Okay, you guys are over here. Yeah. Look at right over here. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez.